Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Welcome back to another episode of the Work From Home Show. I'm your host, Naresh Fissa, as always, with my main man, my brother from another mother, my co-host, Adam. It's great to be here. Great, great, great to be here. And again, www.workfromhomeshow.com. We give you that website every show, www.workfromhomeshow.com. We continue to grow our listenership, Adam. We're up to 18 people. Hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, by the time they hear this, it might be 19. It could be, it could be, but you know, I think we pissed someone off in the last episode. So, you know, we lost one person. So uh, that yeah, well, that evens out. Up. It evens out. It evens out. But um, on the last episode, we talked a little bit about food and about how we cook or order food and some tools and resources. And we promised, or Adam promised, that he would share more information about how we can eat healthy at home. And this is a topic, to be quite frank, I just never cared about. I, <laughs> I've, uh, uh, the words of youth. <laughs> well, well, it's one of those things. It is, I think it's important to care about your diet and what you put in your body. But the reason why I specifically didn't care about it is because I've been vegetarian for, I think, what, 10 years now I've been fully vegetarian no eggs um, no fish obviously for 10 years and I've been we're vegan at home so we're not vegan when we leave the home but we're vegan at home meaning we don't buy any dairy we don't uh, yeah we don't buy any dairy so just that type of diet I feel is is healthy but my friends tell me that I eat some of the shittest food known to man. So um, I know, Adam, you and your wife, you guys cook at home. You enjoy cooking at home. It seems that you eat healthy. Yeah, so most of the time we eat little, healthy. Yeah, so tell us a little more about that. Yeah, so it's really, if you just don't go out a lot, it's a big, big step in the right direction. I mean, we make, a, we have a little... And I'm sure anybody can find it in the city they're in. You can either go to farmer's markets or you can get... Uh, my wife found this thing where they do a kind of a co-op basket where every two weeks we pay, I think it's like 30 or $35 and we can order like uh, vegetables and stuff from this uh, farm a little outside of town. And then they just bring it to a central location and everybody goes and picks up their food and goes away and it's great especially like this past uh week we went and got it and you know it was the you know isolating thing but they have the baskets kind of spread out in the parking lot so you literally just walk up you bring your own bags you take the crate that your stuff is in dump it in a bag and walk away so you know it's a very <laughs> very isolating experience and these kind of things are all over and so that's kind of how we get a lot of our vegetables um fruit we burn through in our house so that we just kind of go by whatever's in season because i tell you what with four kids who love fruit nothing stays nothing stays in our house but then the other thing is we just look at um utilizing what's in season and then in general if you follow recipes that aren't baking you're going to be eating healthier than pretty much anything you're going to go out and eat that's not like a vegan restaurant. <laughs> if you go to like a Mexican food restaurant or, you know, American restaurant or Chinese food restaurant, those are meals that are way heavier than anything you're going to get at home most days. Yeah, and you say that your kids love fruit and now that I'm I'm starting to think you you said a lot of words like fruits and vegetables and yeah, now <laughs> that I think about my diet, it's Man, one of the drawbacks of capitalism 
look, I, well, I'm a capitalist. I'm as capitalist as it gets. That's why we started this podcast. But one of the drawbacks of capitalism is shit can infiltrate the market and you end up eating that shit. And yeah, I have a pretty bad diet. I, I need to eat more fruit. When you say your kids go through fruit left and right and they love it and this and that. We have to limit their fruit intake. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I need to. I need to start eating more fruits. And fortunately, I, I brought up that my mother-in-law has been living with us uh, since my son was born a couple of months back. So she's in and out of our home. But she cooks very healthy with vegetables. So I eat her food. And even when I eat out, I hope I, 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 I eat you know enough vegetables. But when it comes to just having that, like it seems like your kids love fruit and they, they'll go through your fridge trying to find fruit. Like I, that's just not what I do. I'm, I'm, I never crave it. And as a result, I don't even know when I eat fruit or vegetables on my own. It's all just kind of, just given to me. So that's one of the things. If you're going to be working from home. It's going to be important that, you know, like you were saying, it's going to be important to have these things available because, you know, when you're at the office, your tendency is if it's not there, oh, we can just go out to eat because, you know, we're in the office and we want to get out. If you're at home, for the most part, you're going to eat what's there. You'll find, I mean, anybody who's worked from home, it will tell you if you're at home and working, the likelihood that you're going to decide, oh, okay, I'm going to go get out of my office, go get the car keys, drive to a restaurant, you know, downtown off or not even downtown offices, but 99% of offices, I would say, are closer to a restaurant than a house is, you know, so yes. it's, it's a much bigger thing to go out and go to a restaurant. So you need to have fruit available. You need to have decent snack options at home. And you're going to need to think about these things before you get to that point. Like whenever I work from home, or not whenever, when, whenever I started working from home, it was important for me to actually, I started planning my meals just like I was going to the office. So the night before I would get ready and I would actually box my lunch up. Like I'd put it in the containers, get it all ready, put it in the refrigerator. And that way the next day, whenever lunchtime came around, it wasn't, oh, well, I'm hungry. So I'll just eat all the things. It's no, I'm hungry. And I have this lunch ready for me. Now it's gotten to the point over the years where I don't do that anymore. You know, I'm, I've gotten a lot better at that. And kind of in the morning, I have a food journal basically where I kind of tell myself what I'm going to do for the day. And then I, you know, mark it down. So then I'm honest with myself about what's there. But when you're first getting started, I definitely recommend planning your meals because you'll find otherwise you'll just stand there with the pantry door open being like, all right, what can I shove in my face next? And remember, Wuhan virus, restaurants aren't open. It's takeout only, delivery. We talked about Uber Eats and DoorDash on the last episode. So you're going to have to stock up on the fruits and vegetables or at least some kind of food at home. Yeah, and you need to, and not only that, but when you go to the store, you need to buy a lot, like a little more than you think you're going to need because you don't want to be going in there, you know, like we go to the store usually before this, uh, before COVID-19, we would go to the store two or three times a week just to, you know, or we'd go to two to three different stores, you know, whoever had certain fruit on sale or, you know, if we knew, you know, we would buy a certain amount of bananas, but, you know, not too many because they would go, you know, get yellower than we wanted. So we'd go back. And so now it's very much like stocking up for the week almost. It's like we'll get some that are really, really green so that they'll be better later in the week. Um, so, you know, in terms of stocking up, make sure you get produce that's in different stages of, of readiness because you don't want to be going there multiple times a week if you don't have to. And I'll tell you, working from home, when I was living in Baltimore, I think I did a better job of planning out my meals because I would eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no snacks in between, and I would eat on time. But for whatever reason, I don't know what happened after moving down to Florida, but I, my, my, my schedule, because of, maybe it was because I was living on the beach or I don't know what it was, but my schedule was just way out of whack 
way, way out of whack. And it wasn't until recently, until the birth of my son, and I've been forced to to wake up during normal work hours and uh, eat breakfast in the morning and lunch at lunchtime and dinner at dinner time. But when you're working from home, it's easy to get carried away with your work, and it's it's still a problem that that I that I have, where I get up. I'll get ready and then just go straight to my computer and start working and I'll work and work and work until like 3 p.m. and I haven't even eaten anything all day. And it's just, that can't be healthy. <laughs> no. no, and also it's one thing I've noticed when I started working from home and I still do it sometimes, I don't drink anything. And that's, you know, ter- that kills my hunger later, you know, makes me even hungrier. It's a lot, it's really easy to forget to drink water because at the office I found, you know, the whole talking around the water cooler thing wasn't just this thing made up for TV. You know, you would obviously, a lot of times you would get out of your chair, you'd go, you know, even if you weren't talking around the water cooler, you'd go and, or I would go and get a, fill up my water bottle. And then on my way back to my desk, I'd find myself drifting off to talk with friends and other stuff. But, you know, it was very much a kind of, if I needed a break, I would get up and go get water at home. If I need a break, I might just, you know, turn on a show on Netflix or Hulu or something like that, or, you know, go outside for a few minutes. And I, I find myself not drinking enough water whenever I'm get whenever I really get into it. And listeners, I don't really have a lot of insight to add to this topic because I'm very obviously, you can tell I'm not the expert. I, I, I do it all wrong. So <laughs> you would expect, I mean, my wife is, she's a doctor, she's a MD physician, um, but even she knows that my habits are not the greatest. Um, <laughs> but but I still do, I will say this, because this also ties into just kind of health and wellness and, and eating. Uh, I take exercise very seriously, so I don't know what you do for exercise, Adam, but I try to exercise every day. Um, I do have a tennis group, so I play tennis about twice a week. I used to during my heyday, uh, when I lived on the beach, I was playing beach volleyball or grass volleyball twice a week, tennis twice a week, basketball once a week. I was lifting weights, running around the the beach, good stuff. But now we live in a, in a single, in a single family home. We have my son and I'm not really planning to uh, really vamp up my physical activity until my son gets older so I could teach him a lot of these sports and, and play with him. But even right now, I still get time to play tennis or run around the block um, or just do exercises in, in one of our rooms, do some ab workouts, do some stretches, do some yoga. That's very important to me because it helps mentally and I hope it helps physically. Um, but But I also get tested. Uh, I, I go in for my checkups. I get blood tested uh, a couple of times a year just to make sure that my levels are, are fine and the re- results turn out okay. Um, but but food-wise, uh, I could definitely use some more work. <laughs> I go to the YMCA near us because they have uh, really good child care. And I've been having trouble during this with the shutdown just because I don't really do... I used to play rugby and I would get my sports in that way. But since I, I stopped playing a couple of years ago because the scheduling with four kids was just rough. So I, my main thing is lifting weights and I love lifting weights, but you know, the gym is shut down now and I'm trying to find other ways to, to do it. My wife tells me I need to do yoga, but I just, yoga is just not my thing. I did it for a summer and it was fine, but doing yoga at home is not something I want to do. So I need to find other things to do. And so I actually just, tonight, I hung my heavy bag up in the garage. So when we're done recording, I'm going to wrap my hands and go out there and punch a bag for a while. But, you know, that's something that I, and whenever you make your schedule, I I schedule in my workouts. I know, like, from 10 to noon, I'm going to be, I'm going to take the kids out of the house. I'm going to go get my workout in, and then we'll be home. It's not something that you can just say, you know, oh, I'll go during my lunch hour or I'll go right after work. You can't do that. Or I'm going to go on my way to work. You need to start saying, I'm going to go at 6 a.m. or I'm going to do this at 11 or I'm going to do this at eight o'clock in the evening. You have to remember that there's not going to be those breaks in your day that used to be there. 
it used to be you had it set. It was before work, lunchtime, or after work. Those are your three options. Now your whole day is available. So you need to look and see where you're gonna fit it in in your whole day. And if you're doing it right, and you're able to limit your work hours, you know, like we talked about before, going from maybe eight hours in the office to four or five hours at home working, then you've got those extra four hours to do something, you know, so, but you're gonna have to plan it in or you're gonna find it's way too easy to get sucked down the work hole and um, never, never work out. I have, I've had several stretches in my working from home life that haven't involved exercise because I'm busy filling my time with other stuff and I haven't scheduled in time to work out. When you say several stretches, are we talking months? Are we talking years? Are we talking um, months. days? Okay, months, yeah. 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 Now, with your kids, have you taught them any of these sports or you just take them take them to the YMCA and let them do their kid stuff and you do your adult stuff? Um, we do, my older two and I do homeschool soccer on Tuesdays. Well, we're not doing it right now because the whole don't get in groups uh, of people thing. But we go to a homeschool soccer game every Tuesday. Um, we, my younger, the twins, like, we'll go outside and we'll, uh, they want to play baseball with me. And so I'll pitch to them. And, but a lot of the sports, they're, they're, they're not into sports as much as I want them to be, but you know, they, they have their other likes and they do, we go to the park and do parkour and stuff, but we haven't gotten into like the big time us, uh, all together playing sports yet. You know, I'm hoping that one day they'll get more into sports and but we'll watch sports we'll watch baseball together and stuff but no they haven't uh they haven't done that going back to food are your kids do they i'm not sure what your rules are with tv but do they get fed all those commercials with mcdonald's happy meals and they want you to (laughs) take them to mcdonald's because that's how it was when i was a kid we would mcdonald's was our go-to yeah they don't because we that's the beauty of cutting the cord is there's very few commercials like that most of the time it's like car commercials you see because for the most part fast food places don't uh you know even if you're watching something that has ads for the most part like food restaurants don't don't do that kind of advertising at the moment so it's a lot more just like um like makeup or cars um and that kind of stuff but they only watch about 30 minutes a day and of that time a lot of it a lot of the times that what they choose to watch are like kids shows on netflix or disney plus and those don't have commercials so there's a lot of things that um they don't know about <laughs> and we don't go out to eat at restaurants very often so they just thankfully they don't know about that stuff wow that's that's awesome um and as far as the grocery shopping goes you said you you tend to go to the farmers markets. Um, I'm assuming no. those are. We go we no. go to the. There are farmers markets around, and I was saying people can find them. We do most of ours just through that co-op uh, fruit and vegetable thing that we do, and we, some other like potatoes and onions and stuff too. But you know there are definitely no matter what city you're in, there's going to be farmers markets you can go to. Right. There's a lot of them. You know you obviously think of them on weekends, but in Houston and in Austin. And I'm assuming in other major cities, there's always some during the week too. And those are a little less picked over because you don't have the massive crowds coming in. And how do the prices compare with these co-ops compared to, let's say, Walmart? Um, I mean, you're probably going to pay a little bit more. I haven't priced it out. You know, you're probably paying a little bit more, but nothing extreme. Like we're not paying $2 a pound for grapes or something like that. It's um, not like Whole Foods. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really know. Honestly, I stay at home. My wife goes out to work, but she does most of the grocery shopping because she actually enjoys it. Oh wow! And I, <laughs> she doesn't send me enough to go do it, and so it takes me about three times longer to do the grocery shopping than her because I don't know where things are in the store. Like I'll find it eventually, but. I walk around and I do way more steps in the grocery store than I need to. And I'm, I've actually loved for people who uh, do go shopping, who don't usually, whenever this ends, if you keep working at home and you go to the store, the whole like, uh, food delivery from like at HEB or whatever that grocery store is near you, 
how they have the you know the curbside pickup. I don't use that, but I use their workers because their workers are always out there getting food for other people. And I ask them where, where things are because they all know where everything is in the store now because they're collecting it for people all the time. So it's it's great. Yeah, I'm still I'm a huge Instacart fan. So <laughs> to our listeners, if, if you're like me and you don't like going driving to big grocery stores and getting into fights over toilet paper, <laughs> uh, just go to our show notes page and you can use that special promo code so you can get pretty much free groceries on your first order and free delivery. If you can't find the code, email us hello at workfromhomeshow.com. That's hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Adam, any other final tips on eating healthy while at home? No, I mean, I think it's just like what we said before is just plan ahead. You know, what do they say? Um, making what failing to plan is planning to fail or something like that, whatever that is. So just treat it like you're going to the office. You know, even though you're staying at home, you know, treat it like you're going to the office. And I think the main, the overarching idea, part of the reason why I said earlier that I can't really wrap my head around this idea or concept is because we've gone through our entire lives, at least at, at my age first, I'm 31, and I've gone through my entire life just kind of eating whatever I want and not feeling any repercussions. But fact of the matter is, in the United States, the United States is not a very healthy country. <laughs> Look up the statistics online. It's actually pretty poor when it comes to health. And you can't blame it solely on the healthcare system or the doctors. A lot blame of it, it on is... drive through <laughs> A lot of it is the shit that we eat and the shit that's sold. And so, like I said, I have kind of become a little health conscious. But at home, because I have this umbrella philosophy of oh we're a vegan household so i can eat whatever i want i just haven't been as health conscious as i probably should be so um i just need to i mean i'm kind of a workaholic i think you know that adam yeah and so my work always it's not a question of my work coming first it's just it, it's almost like a mental not maybe a mental illness i don't know it's a good mental illness to have i think <laughs> it's like i need to oh i've had five emails i need to answer them right now i need to do the work right now there's something about me where my email inbox has to be at zero in order for me to be a happy person and then i can eat the food after that and so that's something that i need to work on for sure and you all you listeners working from home it's really really easy to fall into this trap really simple, especially since you're going from that corporate setting to working from home. Um, you're going to feel like, you know, when you are at home, because you have more downtime, because there is work to be done, that's going to take priority over everything. And so, look, I'm not perfect. I'm just saying, understand the way the science works, know how to distinguish between what's healthy versus what's not healthy, including the times that you eat. And just, just trust, just trust the, you know, trust what the, the doctors tell you, trust what, I mean, not even the doctors, trust what the vegetables and the fruits tell you, just, just trust it. Can't go wrong with fruit and vegetables. Says the man who doesn't know if there's fruit in his house right now. <laughs> exactly. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help myself, Adam. This episode is really more for me, helping myself. <laughs> what was the last vegetable you ate? Uh, something that my mother-in-law put in the food that I ate for dinner. <laughs> hidden, <laughs> hidden in the food. It's hidden. It's hidden. I know. I know when my mother-in-law cooks, there are vegetables in there. Same with my mother. I know <laughs> there are going to be vegetables. I know it's healthy. <laughs> so what you're saying is, in a, whenever she leaves, it's a, uh, it's all downhill from there. It's back to my. I mean, I do. I, I buy vegetables. I make pizzas, pastas, uh, potatoes. So, I. It's hard to be a vegan household and not have any vegetables. Let's put it that way. That's true. <laughs> yep. So anyway, th thanks for another great episode, Adam. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in. Again, email address hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Go to our website, workfromhomeshow.com. Subscribe to our mailing list. You'll get a free copy of my book, 50 Shades of Marketing. We're going to be sending out a link to that book, 50 Shades of Marketing, in uh, two to three weeks. So 
hurry up, get on that list, and please, 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 if you do like what you hear, go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts or TuneIn or Stitcher or Spotify, wherever you're listening to the show. We're everywhere now. We are on every podcasting platform. If you go to our website, workfromhomeshow.com, we have hyperlinks there that take you to all these different platforms that, that we're on. So we're thankful for that, but please leave us your review um, on any of those platforms that where you listen to us or where you found us. Definitely leave a review. Be honest in your review. And you know what, Adam? I'll even throw in, I'll throw in another book of mine. I, I have five books. So if you leave a review on iTunes or whatever platform you're listening on, if you leave that review and you take a screenshot of it and email us, hello at workfromhomeshow.com, I will send you personally a free audiobook. I will actually respond to the email under my name and will send you a promo code for an audiobook for any of my books that I have. And it'll be through Audible. So it's Amazon or Audible. And I have, like I said, five books, podcast. You can go on Amazon and, and look at them all. So I'll be glad to throw in that freebie as well if you leave that review. So, Uh-oh. He's stepping up the game, people. Stepping up the game, folks. We're, we're growing quite a bit for getting this thing up and running in two days. It's kind of it's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, and so, don't forget to tell your friends because you know they're having to work from home too. Yes, tell your friends. We love... We love your friends. We don't discriminate, homies. We do not <laughs> discriminate. Homeboys, my homegirls, my home trans. We talked about the strippers. We don't discriminate against them. They got to work from home, too. We welcome anyone and everyone of all age groups, too. I mean, it, it's kind of surprising, Adam, how many like older people listen to our show, like people 50 and up. I, I actually did not expect that. Well, I mean, they're the ones that, I mean, this is a whole new world. I mean, if you're younger... You probably know somebody who's working from home, but you know, whenever you know the new technology comes around, it's always a, a shock to the the older generations. First, I would think. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, thanks again, everybody, for listening, and until next time, keep on working from home.